0.07, second place to James Dillon, 24.30, and third to Jamie Graham. So Anthony James does what he has to do to get into the final later on this evening. That's right. And these swimmers now who qualify for the final will have to get back, swim down, and make themselves available for the final, which is later on. You can see the finish now, finishing on a full stroke, Anthony James in lane four. That's the way to do it. You don't want to be finishing on a half a stroke or too long that you have to glide in, because that is just wasting time. That was the perfect way to finish a fly race. Anthony James then, fastest time, 24.07. Winning it by quite a big margin in the end. James Doolin in second, Jamie Graham in third. And Sam Horrocks, 24-9-2 in fourth. We can see some really big things in this next semi-final. Anthony James's teammate, Ben Proud, both from at the Plymouth Leander Swimming Club, coached by John Rudd, Olympic champion in Ruta from last year in the 100 metres uh, breaststroke. So they're starting to get a real squad together that can deliver, not only in, in the British uh, stage, but also in the Olympic and world stage as well. Here is the one to eight, and you see Ben Proud right in the middle, just one tenth of a second outside Mark Foster's British record this morning. 25, 23.51 is what it is. 23.61 is what he did. Watch out for Rebecca Adlington's boyfriend. Beyonce. Yeah, no, I was trying to think of the word. <laughs> Make a big deal about that. But you're quite right. Beyonce is the right word. Harry Needs goes in lane three for Stop Four Metro. And there'll be lots of others in this lineup looking to do really fast times. Remember, top eight times, fastest times will qualify. But is Ben Proud going to break a record that has stood? for a long, long time. We're going back to uh, not quite ancient history, Mark Foster, if you're watching, but uh, it was Zagreb, I think in 2005, something like that. I think it's 10 years, I think it was back, all the way back to, to Worlds 2003 when he got a, a silver medal at the World Championships. Right, so we're looking at a 10 year old record here that could be going to Ben Proud. 23.61 qualifying, obviously a personal best. 23.51 is what he needs, or better, of course, to break Mark Foster's record. He will be pushed all the way, I'm sure, by the likes of Thomas Laxton, Harry Needs, and Ben Lowe in lane number six. But we are keeping a very close eye on lane number four, and it is him all the way. He's visibly got a lead at 25, even bigger lead at 35. The question is, it is Ben Proud against the clock. Can he do the time? Can he get that time? Can he stop the clock when he's at 23.29? It is a massive new British record for Ben Proud. Mark Foster lost his 50 freestyle record early in the week. He's now lost his 50 butterfly record as well to Ben Proud, the 19-year-old of Plymouth Leander, 23.29. He's absolutely smashed that British record. 23.51, Mark Foster from 10 years ago. He's just gone 23.29 to absolutely rewrite the record books. Mark Foster, one of the greatest sprinters we've ever produced here in Britain, is now completely wiped off the British records. I think he still might have a short course or two, but say long course, he's very much obliterated from the record books. Ben Proud will be going in the final later on. Of course, his, his night's work is not done yet. This is a semi-final, so how much faster can he go later on with no pressure on him? 23.92. Look how much he's won that by. Three quarters of a second over Thomas Laxton, Harry Needs in third, and Benjamin Lowe in fourth. Here are the qualifiers, Proud, Laxton, James, Doolan, Graham, Needs, Horrocks and Lowe all getting their places in the final, which comes later on in the session. But a British record to start off the evening. What a very good performance that turned out to be. Not unexpected after what he did this morning, but Ben Proud, 23.29 compared to 23.61 this morning. That is extraordinary and quite exceptional. What do you make of that, Kate? impressed with the performance of Ben Proud. He really does not fail to impress here. We've already spoken to him here on the fast lane a couple of days ago, and he's such a humble lad. And I'm joined by Ross Davenport, and we also have Bob Ballard commentating, and Cassie Patton will be joining us a little bit later on. And just to remind you, this is the British Gas Swimming Championships 2013 here in Sheffield Ponds Forge. And this is the one and only chance for our athletes to qualify to the FINA World Championships in Barcelona in just a few weeks' time. And Ben Proud, again, doing another qualification time. Obviously, he has to do it in the final as well. 
Yeah, Ben's on absolute. He's swimming on fire. Um, his 53 was was PB by over half a second. He did exactly the same time in the semi-final as he did in the final in the 53. So it certainly doesn't tire him out at all. And it, it absolutely flew down that length. You can see that, that on a 50-meter race is winning by a country mile. Um, and he absolutely obliterated Mark Foster's British record. Now, that is the 50 metres butterfly, but the semi-finals are flying thick and fast. So let's head back over to Bob for the women's 50 metres breaststroke. Which contains the likes of Philippa Cochran of Seven Oaks and Stacey Tad, University of Bath. Big personal best for Philippa Cochran in lane number four. Stacey Tad, very established 100 and 200 metres breaststroke swimmer in this country going in the splash and dash. Not her favourite, but she did do a personal best this morning in the heat. So everybody's breaking records here, but this is a much tighter race than we saw just now. About three or four of them in a line. Philippa Cochran's having a good swim, but it's the established Stacey Tad going with Rebecca Swales in lane number seven. And also going well, Sophie Taylor in three. And Sophie Taylor might just get there first, she does. 32.11 for her, and that is just outside her personal best. Second place to Stacey Tad, 32.15. That's a new personal best for her. And Philippa Cochran of Seven Oaks didn't quite back up what she did this morning, but it's a, it's a new kind of environment for the 18-year-old. But a good swim there for Sophie Taylor from Leeds. So you can see those swimmers, lanes three, four, and five, all in a line coming towards the wall. So whoever gets their hand on the wall first finishes on a full stroke. We saw it on the butterfly, it's exactly the same on the breaststroke as well. Whoever finishes on the full stroke tends to normally win the race when it comes to the close finishes. There's your one, two, three, four. Sophie Taylor, Stacey Tad, Philippa Cochran, and Rebecca Swales getting the uh, four fastest times, 32.11, the winning time. There's 16 100 of a second separating first to third. That's how close it is on these 50 events. It could be the difference from winning a medal, winning the championship, or, or missing out on the final. It's ever so close. Coming up next, oh, it's a DQ. Philippa Cochran getting DQ'd in that, by the way, before we, uh, we lost the graphic, but I can tell you that was a disqualification for Philippa Cochran in lane number four. So she won't be taking part in the final. Here's A2 Hope 2. Now that's the uh, qualification and clarification of that DQ for Philippa Cochran in the last race. Now on to semi-final number two of the women's 50 metres breaststroke and uh, Catherine Johnston in lane four the Scottish record holder from Edinburgh University was the quickest this morning the record stands at 31.48 also going Georgina Evans who's had a really good way I'll tell you what she's another swimmer every time she gets in the pool pretty much is doing a personal best and she did one this morning and she'll go in lane number three. From Derwent's side in lane number five is Rachel Wilson. And we'll see uh, Andrea Strachan from Edinburgh University. Good uh, spread here, actually. The coast team, Isle of Man, Edinburgh, Derwent side, Edinburgh University again. City of Liverpool, DaVincio have swimmers in one and two. Ruta Miliotite. Our very own Plymouth Leander swimmer, of course, swims for Lithuania, has the fastest time in the world this year. Oh, we have a problem on the starts, so they're going to have to stand down for a moment. Mr. Uh, Rossi got an ob observation on the, uh, the, the Ben Proud, uh, I, th I think the reaction time of Ben Proud in that race that we've just seen. Yeah, we've got the results through. We can see the reaction time from Ben Proud was around about 0.5 quicker than anybody else. Um, so no wonder he got a great start. Uh, you know, almost a tenth quicker than the some of the swimmers. Second semi-final of the women's 50 metres breaststroke, which contains Edinburgh University's oh and Scottish God. record holder Catherine Johnson going in lane number four. And uh, they're pretty much together at 25. You spotted something earlier here, Ross. Yeah, Catherine Johnson has had a great start. We've seen her on the 100 metres. She's always been winning on the heat semi-final and final, but not been able to back it up in the second leg. So this is where she qualified for the, the Commonwealth Games team for Scotland on the 50 metres breaststroke. Don't think anybody's going to head her. Georgina Evans isn't going to 
get there. Rachel Wilson's not going to get there. And uh, Catherine Johnson does 31.77, a decent semi final time, not a personal best, but it is uh, getting on for a season's best for her. In second place, it was Rachel Wilson. Third place to Georgina Evans. And. Catherine Johnson stopping the clock at 31.77, and this is how she did it. She just missed the world qualification time by 0.2, so she'll be looking to go a smidgen quicker in tonight's final at the end of the session, so she can be in consideration for the world championship team. 32.15 is a personal best for Rachel Wilson in second place, Kate. And as Ross did just mention, this is the chance for the swimmers to qualify for the FINA World Championships in Barcelona in only a few weeks' time. And already this week, we have seen almost 15 of our British athletes doing the qualification time. And it's subject to confirmation, they will find out later on next week whether they make the team. But that is what it's all about. So the pressure is really on. Already this week, we've had world records, we've had British records, and they really have been doing some great times. So it's all about them performing as good as they can. Just let you know that you can tweet us at BGSC13. We will do our best to read out those comments. But I'm now going to take you to the next semi final, and that is the men's 50 meters backstroke. So straight back over to you, Bob. They come thick and fast, don't they, Kate? This is the 50 backstroke semi final number one, and we'll be interested to see here, Ross, where we just how Liam Tancock looks after the big disappointment of not qualifying in his main event last night, the 100 back. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, the 100 back is the Olympic event, and that's the one he always aims for and always trains for. He just so happens to be the world champion at the 50 meters backstroke, not only in 2011, but in 2009 as well. So he's going to want to, well, he's desperately want to want to qualify on that event because he wants to regain his title and make it a hat-trick of wins. One person who impressed us in Leeds in March, who watched our transmission from there, was Liam Knight of City of Peterborough. Looking for a personal best, not on his qualifying time, quite a personal best, but he'll improve on that, I'm sure, tonight. Joe Elwood on the other side of Liam Tancock, another of the Loughborough swimmers. Personal best set by him in lane number three this morning. Now, Liam Tancock goes 15 underwater, so it's basically a 35-metre race for Liam when he comes up. Yeah, you can see he's already into his, his stride. He's already winning by half a body length. He's going to be angry and he's going to be really wanting to put the, the record straight after last night's disappointment. And he's storming through with only 10 metres to go. 24.04 is his British record. Where is he going to stop the clock here? 25.21 for Liam Tancock. That is a season's best for him. Liam Knight in second place, 26.07. New personal best for him. Joe Elwood in third place. And Another personal best by three one hundredths of a second. So pretty good all round for one, two, and three there. And uh, that really was a much better swim tonight from Liam Tancock in the 50 than it was this morning. And also he was under the world qualification time um, for the world championships, but he has to do it in the final. But I don't think Liam backed off at all, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes a little bit later on. That was really a, a kind of a, you know, I'm back. I'm, you know, anybody who's written me off, I'm still around. I'm still got a world class at this event, and that showed with his dominant win. There's how it finished. Liam Tancock, as expected, winning that semi final 25 points, 2 1. Liam Knight, personal best. Joe Elwood, personal best in two and three. On to semi-final number two, big roar for the local lad, City of Sheffield. Well, I say local lad, it's actually from Stoke, so he's not that local. And he swims for the City of Sheffield, that's Dave Gregory in lane number three. And in lane number four, you are looking at the man who uh, set the time this morning. That is actually a qualifying time for the world in a few weeks' time. Marco Locken, now normally you'd imagine him doing the 100 and the 200. He's showing he has got a bit of speed, over 50 as well now. He said that he went to 10th under the world uh, qualifying time for Barcelona, and he's going to be the major threat to Liam Tancock. He'll probably smell blood on Liam because he's not swimming as well as he wanted to. So this is a chance for the, the up-and-coming swimmers to, to really make a, a big scalp and get a, a win under the belt. Joe Litchfield, Doncaster in one, Craig Gibbons, Wickham in two, David Gregory in three for Sheffield, Marco Lockerin in four for Guildford, Luke Wood of City of Salford in five, Rory Lamont of West Dunbartonshire in six, and Kieran McGuckin of Edinburgh in seven, and Adam Taylor representing City of Sunderland in eight.
second semi-final of the men's 50 minutes backstroke so we've seen already what Liam Tancock can do a very good time but it was nothing to what Marco Lochran did this morning 25.16 and he's going for it again Ross yeah popped up and like Liam is way out in front with only 15 meters to go he's about a meter half a body length than everybody else First of best time for him this morning. Can he get inside 25.16? No, he can't actually. He goes slower by five one hundredths of a second tonight. Luke Wood of City of Salford finishing in second place. And that's just outside his personal best as well. And third to David Gregory, who will be delighted because he said he wanted to make a final, and it looks like he has. And that time from Marco is exactly the same time that Liam did in the previous semi-final. So the joint first going into the final, both under the qualification time for the World Championships. So that's going to be an incredibly interesting final later on. How do they separate that out for lane four tomorrow? Or well, later um, on, actually? Yeah, I think normally they'll probably go on to alphabetical order um, and, and do it that way. Um, so so Mar Marco Locker and yes, sorry, to Ross. Marco Locker 25-2-1, Luke Wood in second, and David Gregory in third place. Sorry, I'll cut you off mid-sentence there. So it probably will be Marco in lane four, will it, for the final? Yes, um, I, I don't think they literally flick a coin and heads or tails, but uh, to be honest, it doesn't really matter on the 50, as long as they're in the middle lanes, that's where the race is going to be. And they're so far ahead of everybody else, it's just down to those two guys. So David Gregory and Kieran McGuckin in third and fourth in that second semi-final. The final of all the 50s to come later on in the session. So you'll be seeing all those top swimmers once again when they compete for a world championship time a little later on in the competition. Next up will be the women's 200 meters freestyle. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting one. It's going to be a very interesting one, certainly for the home crowd here, Ross, because there are two Sheffield swimmers side by side who battle away in training uh, day in, day out. A very good friend, but I think when they get in the pool, that friendship is suspended for a couple of minutes. Certainly is. And the, the ranked first and second going into this final, Rebecca Turner, ranked number one in lane four. Her time from the, the semi final was 159.08, and Ellie Fortner. In lane five, her time was about half a second slower in 159.50. So those two girls will be in the middle, but certainly don't write off Caitlin McCatchy in lane three. Represented a country at three Olympic Games, world championship medalist in 2005. Extremely, extremely experienced. And then also you've got Hannah Miley out in lane seven. Don't write her off. She's been on the Olympic Games team as a relay alternate. Anne Bockman's been to the Commonwealth Games for this event. Um, so this this race is, is completely... Uh, inundated with wealth and experience it is and also pretty much seven of the eight swimmers have posted very similar times in 2013 so far i think we're only maybe disregarding to a certain extent sasha matthews in one and shauna lee in eight but all the others 158 159 two minutes there or thereabouts it's going to be a very very tight competition uh, but rebecca turner has the best of the times from the heats this morning 159.08. She has been 157.65. It's interesting because obviously uh, Eddie Faulkner goes up in distance. Rebecca Turner comes down in distance. This is probably Eddie Faulkner's least favourite event and possibly Becky Turner's favourite event. Yeah, that's right. Also in lane two, you've got Sophie Smith, who's been training in Loughborough with the likes of Dan Fogg and Jack Vernell. She's tipped to do some great things over the next couple of years. So keep an eye on Sophie Smith in lane two. Could be a dark horse in this race. Yeah, this is going to be a cracking race. It really is. Best times in the world this year. Camille Mufan, not surprisingly, 155.48. Melissa Franklin of the USA, Bronte Barrett, 1, 2, and 3. No Brits showing yet. Their chance to change all of that comes in this final of the women's 200 metres freestyle. It's going to be a, a really good head to head between the two Sheffield teammates, but. Caitlin McClatchy will have something to say about that. And Bockman in six certainly will. And you're never quite sure what Anna Miley's going to do. She doesn't go into a race for fun. She goes into a race to win it every time. And also what we have seen, this is Hannah Miley's first race of the evening. Normally see her doing a 200 metres freestyle after she's done probably about 15 races. So this is a fresh Hannah Miley and she turned then in eighth position. So she doesn't normally get going until a, a good 100, 125 metres into it. But by that time, the race could have gone. Anne Bockman in one lane down from in lane six is leading this race out. 
Surprised to see Becky Turner as far off the pace as she was at 50. This may well be a strategy. We're keeping an eye on Anne Bachman in lane six. Best time for her, 159.07. Well, Eddie Faulkner and Becky Turner, and of course, Caitlin McClatchy have all been quicker than that. But Bachman is getting quicker. And we're watching Ellie Faulkner of the City of Sheffield and Rebecca Turner side by side. And they're starting to make inroads here on Anne Bachman in lane six. Becky Turner normally always swims really quick on that last 50 metres. And there's Ellie Faulkner, she's an 800 specialist. Caitlin McClatchy always has a strong last 100 metres, and you can see she's moving up to around about third position at the minute. It's these first, uh, these four girls as we go into the final turn that's going to be coming down to who wins it. Look at them, they are all in a line, all four of them. Caitlin McClatchy, Rebecca Turner, Ellie Faulkner, and Anne Bachman. Now, who can break the field open here? Nobody yet. It looks like it's four and five. We've talked a lot about them, the training partners. They're here in Sheffield, and they go neck and neck all the way down to the final five metres. This is going to be Ellie Faulkner winning this race off uh, Rebecca Turner. Yeah, Ellie Faulkner gets there first, 158.42, but it is not the qualifying time required for the World Championships. Becky Turner, 158.88. Hannah Miley back in sixth place in the end. Third place going to Caitlin McClatchy, but sad to say, 157.98 was the time they required, and they've fallen quite a long way shy of that. Ellie Faulkner, seven tenths of a second and over a second for Rebecca Turner, and this is how it finished. Yeah, these two girls will go neck and neck, and Caitlin McClatchy had a storm in the last 10 metres to really creep on the shoulder of uh, Rebecca Turner, but it was the two girls in the middle, lanes four and five, training partners, we can see there, Ellie Faulkner, She's had a busy program already, a cracking swim in the 800 metres. So she's already on the team if she's selected on Monday. So she might be able to do that event as well. So this is how it finished. Sadly, as I say, we haven't seen anybody progress through to Barcelona in a few weeks' time. Ali Faulkner, 158.42. Becky Turner in second, Caitlin McClatchy in third. And Anne Bockman, who started so well, and look at 150 as well, fading in the end to two minutes, 0.18. So we'll hear, hopefully, in just a moment from Ellie Faulkner, who will tell us all about the rivalry, no doubt, with Rebecca Turner and how she's done a pretty decent time, but not quite a good enough time for the Olympics. It's Andy Sixsmith with her. Thanks for that, Alan. I am here with Elna. Superb win there, Elna. Fantastic week for you, qualifying in the 800. Just sum up this week. Um, it's been great, obviously. I just came in with the attitude of just have it and hopefully make the team, so... If I make the team, that's a bonus. <laughs> well, listen, you're a little bit breathless. We'll let you shoot off. Well done again, Elna. Elna Faulkner, your 200 freestyle champion. Well done again. Great to hear from Ellie there. And we like to bring you lots of exclusive guests and interviews here. One being Ellie there, who's the current British champion for the 200 metres freestyle. But I actually caught up with Karen Pickering a little bit earlier on today, who's actually a former British champion at the 200 metres freestyle. So conveniently, let's hear what she said about the elite athlete lifestyle. I'm here with Karen Pickering, a former world champion, and she's going to give us an idea of what she had to give up as an elite athlete. Now, Karen, it might seem quite a long time ago, but what <laughs> really you. sticks out to you is what you missed out as a swimmer. Um, it's hard to say what you missed out on because um, when you're doing something you really enjoy and you love doing, you kind of feel like you have the best job in the world. But I think probably looking back since I retired, I'd say the one thing that I, I notice most now is, is weekends and the spontaneity of being able to go away for a weekend or maybe go out in an evening. Things like that you just can't do as an athlete because um, your life is planned so far in advance. You know where you're going to be, competitions, training and resting up for, for training and competitions. And, you know, it's not till the end of the season you can take a break. So I really noticed that. Give us an idea of like a daily routine that you went through as an elite athlete of, with training and your nutrition. So I used to get up just before five o'clock and I'd be on the poolside at quarter past five. Um, so I live near the pool for good reason. Um, I do two hours in the pool uh, and then go home, have um, breakfast, then I'd go to the gym, 
and do about an hour, hour and a half of weight training and come back home and have my main breakfast and then I'd go to sleep. So I'd have a, a nice rest, get up for lunch, <laughs> um, do any sort of jobs, chores, anything I needed to do and then back to the pool for two hours in the evening. And do you think that's very similar? Back live here at Pons Forge for the final of the men's 200 metres breaststroke and we have nine swimmers, not eight swimmers because of what you heard earlier on from Kate about the Andrew Willis situation. We can talk about that later on perhaps, but Andrew Willis quite rightfully, as he did the fastest time, is in lane number four. Lane four, Andrew Willis. They were talking about him maybe going into an outside lane, but he is where he needs to be in four. The two Olympic 200 meter breaststroke finalists side by side in four and five. And it's, we, we can't get too much into the politics, Ross, but it's right he's back in here, isn't it? Yeah, it's great to see that he's been reinstated and back into this race. He's a, he's a genuine medal contender for, if he's selected at the World Championship. The time he did last night put him fifth in the world rankings so far this year. 2.08.47 of Andrew Willis. Michael Jameson doesn't look to be in the kind of form to challenge his Bath teammate, but you would never, ever, certainly I would never, ever, write Michael Jameson off. Robert Holden has broke his own Welsh record last night to qualify in lane number three, so he's in good form. And Adam Peasy just keeps breaking personal best every time he gets in the pool and did it last night in the semi-final, 2-12-27. Now, be careful here, Andrew Willis. It was on the first turn that you got disqualified last night. I think he's going to go out with a purpose because until pretty much 9.30 this morning, maybe as late as 10 o'clock, he didn't know he'd be swimming tonight. No, he didn't. He needs to certainly take this opportunity with both hands. But Michael Jameson, the silver medalist from last year, is not going to let him have it all his own way. And as they go into the first turn, it is Adam Peaty from the City of Derby that turns first in 29.26. Andrew Willis and Adam Peaty given exactly the same time on the turn, so a very good sign. Now, Michael Jameson may be showing now his true colours because he didn't look quite this strong in the semi-final nor the heats, but, uh, well, keeping something in reserve. Andrew Willis goes through this day in, day out. Michael Jamieson alongside him. And these two are going to race each other, which is great for this race. It means we're going to have a really good time. Yeah, they're coming into the 100 metres turn almost neck and neck. It is Andrew Willis that turns first in 102.12. Uh, Michael Jamieson, 102.17. So that is five 100 seconds splitting each other at the 100 metre mark. This is the Bath straight head-to-head, -head, which is pretty much what we saw at the uh, Olympic trials last year, what we saw in the Olympics themselves as they were breaking personal best, and, of course, Michael Jameson was breaking British records. This is a fantastic tussle, and, in fact, Jameson's probably going to lead with 50 to go here. Andrew Willis needs to respond. It is Michael Jameson that turns first, but he's only four one hundredths of a second faster. It was five one hundredths of a second faster at the 100, and now it's only four one hundredths of a second with 50 metres to go. What a cracking race. 2.11.67. They both get the qualifying time. Of that, there is no doubt. But Michael Jameson showing why he is the Olympic silver medalist. But Andrew Willis is responding. 15 metres to go, but Jameson surely has this in lane number five. He's gone a lot, lot quicker than he did yesterday, and he's going to beat his Bath teammate to the wall. It's 2.07.78, the fastest time in the world this year. Michael Jameson pulls it out of the bag. Andrew Willis, 208.59. He's number three in the world now with that Britain one and three in the 200 breaststroke. Michael Jameson, you little tinker. <laughs> He's only three tenths of a second slower than what he did last year at the Olympic Games. He certainly didn't lay any of his cards out on the table up until half past six tonight. That was a fantastic swim from Michael Jameson. I, uh, Andrew Willis did start to fade down that last 25 metres. I do wonder whether the emotions of the last 24 hours might have had a part to play but hopefully now these guys will be selected to go to the world championship and they can go one and two when it comes to the world championships yes world yes usa yes europe yes australasia those are the times 207 78 208 59 if you're looking in from around the world robert holderness with a new welsh record by over a second so look at that 
fantastic start from Jameson Willis and Holderness and Craig Benson to 11.21. That is a new personal best for him by well over a second as well. Magnificent stuff by all our top four. Check out, I'm going to check out on Petey as well. He's done a personal best of 2.12.06. So those five times are remarkable, Ross. Absolutely. When was the last time the whole audience held their breath for a 200 metres breaststroke race? Terrific stuff, Michael Jameson. Well, I did say, didn't I, at the beginning of the commentary, do not write this man off because he always finds something and he found it in absolute spades there. Magnificent stuff from Jameson, number one in the world. Andrew Willis will go into the world championships as number three in the world. Well, could we be thinking about one and three in Barcelona in a few weeks' time? Let's hear from our Olympic silver medalist, Michael Jameson, is with Andy Sixsmith on pool deck. The fastest man in the world this year, Michael, how does that sound? I don't know where that came from, to be honest. Um, I've not been able to string two sessions back to back for the last two months, so the idea of coming in here was just to scrape my way onto the team. And you know, It was so close after the semi-finals last night, I had to... You know, make sure I was really fired up for it tonight, and I, you know, I just went for it, so I'm delighted with it. Michael, that was an incredible performance. How much are you looking forward now to Barcelona? Well, providing I can get back in the pool in the next month, then very much. Uh, no, I think it's obviously there's no medals won here, it's all about the world champs in a month's time, and you know, I've got a month to try and take some more time off that because it'll be quicker than that to, to guarantee a podium in Barcelona. Well, Michael, it was superb. You got the crowd on their feet here in Ponce Forge. Fastest man in the world and your 200-metre breaststroke champion tonight, Michael Jamieson. There's a big smile on my face because I am a swimmer from Bath, and that is the Bath swimmers really putting out top performances. Now, this time last night, we were a bit unsure about what the situation was with the 200 metres breaststroke, and you heard all about the Andrew Willis disqualification, and you're probably wondering why he was back in that final. Now, there was an actual um, jury decision over his disqualification, and we can bring you up the official statement following a protest relating to the result of event 261, the men's open 200 metres breaststroke at the British Gas Women Championships. Um, so it goes on and says that the protest is upheld. Andrew Willis will be reinstated and will swim in the final to take place tonight. And it's also been confirmed that the original swimmer that was maybe knocked out, so there was nine swimmers in that race. But let's not focus on Andrew Willis because he was not the top swimmer in that race. It was all about Michael Jameson and Ross Davenport. What a cracking swim from Michael Jameson. Absolutely incredible. He showed all the credits and the hallmarks of a great champion. You know, everyone was talking about Andrew Willis especially what's been going on the last 24 hours. He's kept his head down, he's kept himself out of the limelight and produced his best swim when it matters. He did that at the Olympic Games last year. He'll most certainly be on the World Championship team now, and we have two genuine medal chances for the World Championships in a month's time. So that's a 200 breaststroke, but it's the 200 freestyle up next, your event. What do you think is going to happen? This is going to be a good one to watch. Um, Robbie Rennick has competed the last two Olympic Games, but he's going to be under pressure from a lot of the youngsters tonight. But I expect Robbie to win this with a close finish behind him. Well, we will hand back to Bob to see how that final unfolds. It's going to be an exciting one. It is, Kate, and Robbie Rennick looking for a 400 and now 200 double in lane number four, going for the City of Glasgow swim team. Alongside him is Yian Lloyd from the city of Cardiff. Very quickly before we start, there's the one to eight with Rennick and Lloyd, the men to watch in three and four. A lot of home support for Nick Granger. First of all, to get him into the final in lane eight. James Guy will go sufficiently quicker than 148.7, I think in this final. Jack Scott, another swimmer who's capable of doing good things here, as is Rennick, as is Lloyd. This is one of those imponderables, and of course, although we're not really supposed to talk about relays, this will constitute our 4x2 relay for Barcelona, hopefully. Yeah, if selected, this will be the makeup of the 4x200 freestyle relay. 
I expect Robbie to go out fast and he is doing it. That's the way he's got to win this race. He's not fully tapered, he's only had half a taper. So if he wants to win this and he wants to do the individual at World Championships, he's got to break these guys early, which it looks like he's doing. Yeah, he's swimming it just like he swam the 400. He went strong from the off. Normally the 400, he saves a little bit of reserve at the end, but he went very strongly early on. He's going to try and break Jan Lloyd and anybody else who might be in his slipstream at the moment. He's got about half a body length over the rest, so we're keeping an eye on James Guy, who's having a, a decent swim in lane number seven. And there's Rennick from Jack Scott on the turn. James Guy in third. And uh, Jan Lloyd showing nowhere at the moment in fifth place. You expect James Guy to come back incredibly fast over this next 75 metres, but it's Robbie that's extending this lead. The third 50 on a 200 metres is ever so important. This is where the experience is showing. Robbie's laid the hammer down, and the rest of the guys are trying to catch him. Jan Lloyd is right on his shoulder now, and so is Callum Jarvis. But it's Robbie Rennick that's going into the third turn about two metres ahead. 147, 47 is well within the compass of Robbie Rennick. It may not quite be for Jan Lloyd as he goes strongly, but this is all about Robbie. It's Robbie against the clock. It is, and he turned in 1.19.0, which is extremely quick. It doesn't look like he's letting up. Robbie's in fantastic form. But it's James Guy now that's moving up into second with Jan Lloyd, probably just about third, and fighting over fourth and fifth is... Ross gives me Robbie Rennick, of course. 146.63, that's well inside the qualifying time. Jan Lloyd, however, has not done it. 148.05, third place is James Guy, 148.29, and third place goes to him, fourth to Joshua Walsh, and they are the one, two, three, four. Nick Granger for Sheffield, just outside his personal best, 149.15. But uh, Rennick, Lloyd, Guy, and Walsh, if selected, of course, could form the four by two team in Barcelona in a few weeks' time. We spoke about Robbie not being fully rested and fully tapered as we see him come now into the last seven metres. Look how far he was from the rest of the field. This is a guy that's represented his country at the last two Olympic game finals for the 200 metres freestyle, and that quality and that experience really did show through. We spoke about him not being rested, fully rested, and he's doing world class times without that rest, so expect big things for Robbie coming up in, in Barcelona in a couple of, uh, couple of weeks' time. Confirmation of the 1-8, to eight. Robbie Rennick broke the field apart, winning that by a second and a half in the end from Jan Lloyd in second place, James Guy in third, Joshua Walsh in fourth, followed by Jack Scott, and the top six that all will hope they get into the relay team for Barcelona. We will hear from Robbie in just a few moments' time, backing up that 400 freestyle victory the other night with a 200 one now, and he's speaking with Andy Sixsmith. Robbie, looking back at the season for you, double silver in the Swim Cup in Eindhoven, strong at Scottish Nationals, now this, sum it up for Yeah, it's been a great running so far, obviously. It's all about the World Championships, so I need to be looking to drop uh, a bit more to, to get competitive in the, in the final there. And you mentioned there the competitive nature of it. freestyle swimming around the world's in a strong state. How confident are you that come Barcelona, you'll be up against? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, so far, I've got a slightly busy program at the moment. So uh, I have the 100 tomorrow. So I need to get recovered and, and try some fast there too. Well, we wish you the best of luck in that, Robbie. The crowd here at Ponds Forge loved it. Robbie Rennick, your 200 freestyle champion. Robbie Renwick is definitely one of the top performers here. He was one of the first to do the qualification time this week, and I'm sure he's going to continue to impress for the rest of the week. But we're focusing on the next race, which is the women's 1500 metres. And I'm actually joined by Cathy Patton in the studio. It's nice to have another lady in the studio with me. And you're just going to talk me through the, the lineup for the, for the next race. Definitely. Well, Eleanor Faulkner's actually pulled out of this now. She's just swam the 200 freestyle and won that. So I think she's having a bit of a rest. But we've got Jasmine Carlin. Now, Jasmine has been on absolute fire. She did a PB on the 800 and uh, yeah she's a massive PB first fast in the world so she's you know absolutely on fire second to her the only person that may push her might be Jess, um, Jessica Thilman come back from Florida she's been swimming well as well but I, I honestly think that Jazz is gonna have this all her own way the swimming long distance is a bit of a tough race probably the toughest one out there and you're a professional at that, at that build yeah I mean when you're swimming on your own which I think Jazz might be doing it's all about getting your head down each 50 doing what you will do in training we do such um, we do such long sets of race pace we might do 30 50s all trying to hit 1500 pace so she'll have that in the bank she'll have that kind of ingrained in so it's just 
just about for her because 1500 meters isn't a normal event for a woman it's normally the 800 meters so yeah it'll be good to see what she does thanks for that brilliant summary there um, Cassie and I think her money is on jazz and I think mine is too but we're going to hand back to Bob Bob who's your money on then yeah, I'll uh, share a little uh, wager, probably uh, two pounds each way, with Jazz Carlin winning this. I mean, the form that she showed in the 800, you really could not back against her, although it's an event that she doesn't do very often, or it must be said, do any of the swimmers in this race. So we have only seven going to start. As you heard, Ellie Faulkner has decided to opt out of this one, having done the 200 earlier on. So I'll uh, lead you through... The one to eight. In one, it is Camilla Hattersley of the City of Glasgow swim team. 16.53 is her best. She'll be looking to take a, a big chunk out of that. Aisha Thornton of Loughborough. 16.38.81 is the best time she's achieved. Megan Gilchrist of the Armadale Barracudas. It's the Gilchrist clan again, isn't it, Ross? Talk about that in a moment. 16.27.49 and three. Jazz Carlin with uh, 16, 18, 80 is uh, her best time. So again, I imagine that's gonna come down by a considerable amount here. Jessica Thielman, based in America at the moment, but uh, swims for City of Newcastle upon Tyne. 16, 23, 50, her best. Lucinda Campbell of Windsor going in lane seven. And uh, Lauren Walton with the slowest entry time of the group from Beckenham, 17, 15, 39. But because this race is so rarely done, Ross, it is a case that these times will probably come down quite a bit because it's only really in World Championship year ever it gets swum. It is, and we saw a couple of years ago that uh, Kerry Ann Payne broke the British record in this event. But that's the only time that it's swum at, in a, certainly at the world stage, is at the World Championship. So. It'll be interesting to see how Jazz does. She's had a busy programme already. Fantastic uh, 800 the other night, fastest in the world. So she'll be looking to carry that form on going into this 1500. Well, we have the Scottish record holder in Megan Gilchrist and Jazz Carlin in uh, the Welsh record position. Megan Gilchrist, any relation? I don't think so. Because the Gilchrist fan, obviously Chris, uh, a well-known breaststroker who just missed out on qualification for the Olympics last year. Uh, those Gilchrist are pretty decent swimmers in Scotland, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Chris, Gil Chris Gilchrist was the, uh, the 2008 world champion short course uh, swimmer. So that heritage of, of name is, is fantastic. And they all seem to be based in Scotland and they all seem to be swimmers and they all seem to be pretty, pretty world class. This will be the 200 mark out of 1500 so a long long way to go but jazz carlin's already thinking about making a big break and uh, making sure there's nobody else in the field who could push her obviously ellie faulkner had she been there would have been a target that's a, a question for you ross I imagine that she would have thought well, okay ellie faulkner's going to be in this lineup um, she'll be in the adjoining lane i'll at least have her as a marker and of course now she doesn't she's got to swim this race pretty much on her own very much on her own I think Jazz is on such good form that she doesn't need anybody to swim with. Um, she, she led the 800 pretty much after 200 metres all the way down to, to the 800. So she's just going to go out there and swim as fast as she can. There's no pressure on her. She knows she's swimming well. She had such a difficult year last year and her confidence would have been rock bottom. But the, the results she did in Leeds in the British Gas International and the results she's done here will certainly put her in good stead of going into the World Championships. Just looking at the top five, I don't think the top two will surprise you greatly. Lotta Fries, who is a beast when it comes to the 1500. Uh, 1601 41, so she's nearly on the 16-minute uh, territory from Denmark. Katie Ledecky in second, and a couple of Chinese, and Chloe Sutton. So America with two and five. It would be nice to break open that top five, but for Jazz to do that, she's going to have to improve her Welsh record by about 11 seconds. Is that on? I think anything's on with Jazz this week. Um, the British record is 16.06.67 from Kerry Ann Payne. If she breaks that, she will move up to fourth in the world this year. But I think Jazz is in better form than, than that 16.06, and it will be interesting to see if she can get anywhere near the British record. Well, as we saw, she went to number one in the rankings of the 800 freestyle. It would be amazing if she could do anything in that region in the 1500. And then, of course, what do you do? She's got the eight and she's got the 15. Now, that is a really difficult program to take on for a week swimming. I mean, especially when there's such a small gap between this and the world champs. Yeah, but she did it last night. She did the, world, uh, the 800 fastest time in the world last night, and now she's back in the pool tonight for the 1500. That's the only thing stopping her tonight, opposed to 
Williams in a truly world-class time is how fatigued would she be after that 800 meters? How did she re recover last night? Did she get any sleep? The emotions would have been going through the roof. And how, what kind of form is she in? We know she's in great form, but what kind of form is she in after that 800 meters last night? The gap between her and Jessica Thielman at that turn, the 400 meter turn, was all of seven seconds. Now, this is going to get bigger as we go along. It's interesting just to watch the marker go up in terms of seconds between first and second. Third place is Aisha Thornton of Loughborough, Megan Gilchrist in fourth place. But yes, that huge, huge gap between first and second, Carlin and Thielman. I expect when they get to 500, it might even be bigger still. You see visibly on your screen, you can't even see the leader now. She's disappeared out of your picture. She's halfway down the pool. There she is, Jazz Carlin. And it looks like something like 13, 14 metres between first and second already. Yeah, definitely. She could do a backstroke now for a good 200 metres and still wouldn't catch up with Jazz. She's going into the 500 metre turn and she turns in 5.14.37. So she, at the minute, she's racking around about 64, 63 seconds per 100. Gap now is up to nine and a half seconds. So in that 100 alone, she took two seconds out of Jessica Thielman. Two full seconds on that 100 freestyle out of Jessica Thielman. Aisha Thornton's hanging on to third. Megan Gilchrist, I'm expecting her to make a bit more of a move in lane four, but uh, I think our cameraman's going to be uh, tracking that pink cap for quite some time. As you can see, now look, nobody's even close to turning at the other end. That's how far, and it's going to be a good 17, 18 metres clear now for Jazz Carlin. I think Jazz could probably lap a good two, three girls in this field by the end of this 1500 metres, and that just shows you the quality of this race. It's going to be a situation where she's going to see a lot of people coming back towards her very, very shortly because uh, she has burst this field wide, wide open. 6.17.62 at 600 metres. We wait for Jessica Thielman to come in to touch in second place, and it is 18 metres, the gap. In terms of time, it is 11 and a half seconds between first and second. This is a procession for Jazz Carlin. Yep, just turned then in 63.3 for that 100 metres, so she keeps that going. That is an incredible pace. But expect her to probably tail off around the middle of the race and then really pick it up with, with like 200 metres to go. Just for those who might be coming across us who aren't aware, normally, as you'll have seen in the Olympics, the men do the 1500, the women do the 800. But when it comes to World Championships in the eight-day program, there are both four men and four women. So really, only on a two-year cycle do we see this event. So they don't really train for it, they don't work for it, and it's uh, a bit of an imprecise science for most of these swimmers around the world, but not for Jazz Carlin, it would seem, who is repping brilliantly here. At 700, she turns in 721.19, and as you can actually see, as she comes down the pool, Jessica Thielman coming in the other direction because the gap now is getting on for 25 metres between first and second. The gap in terms of time is now 13.17 between first and second. Jessica Tillman, who is in second place, is in lane six. She trains out in Florida at the Gators um, with the likes of Ryan Lochte. Previous British swimmers that have swum out there, Steph Proud and, and Gemma Spoffer, also uh, Marco Lachlan used to swim out there as well. So a lot of the British guys are going out to Florida to train um, with the, the brilliance that is my, uh, Ryan Lochte, sorry. Well, you'll give me the splits in a moment, but... To me, she doesn't look to be easing off at all here, Jazz Carling. Looking at from where we are, down in the pool, I'm sure she's feeling a lot of hurt. There's probably an awful lot of lactic acid going through those legs right now, but she doesn't seem to be faltering at all. Let's see where she is at 800 now. This is uh, virtually the, uh, well, she's over halfway now, 824.50 at the halfway stage. How does that now equate to what she's going to do, do you think, Ross? Well, just to put into into context, she's just turned in 800 in 824.5. She won last night in 818, and the second place was Ellie Fortner in 825. So she's just turned quicker than anybody else in the field from last night. But at the minute, she's just racked out. She, uh, she went 63.3, 63.5, 63.4. So she's incredibly even on those splits, and she certainly isn't easing off at all. This is impressive, and of course, 
Her coach is a man who looked after Janet Evans for all those years, Bob McAllister. He certainly knows a lot about distance freestyle, and it was our own very uh, our own Becky Adlington that broke Janet Evans' 24-year-old um, world record, something like that, in the Beijing Olympics. So he certainly knows a lot about distance freestyle, and so does Jazz as she comes up now for the 900-meter mark. In a time of 9:28.14, I think it's just interesting from your point of view because it's very difficult for our cameraman here to give you an example of exactly how big the gap is. But uh, Jazz Carlin is approaching halfway down the pool, and Jessica Thielman is only just turning now. So the gap is 17 seconds between Jazz Carlin, and that's pretty in perspective. This is a pretty good swim by Jessica Thielman. She's not swimming slowly, it's just that Jazz Carlin is swimming out of her skin. Yeah, another 63.6 there for Jazz. So if anything, she's slowed down 0.2, which is nothing on a 1500 meter race. So if she can keep this consistency up, we're looking at a very, very good time. Megan Gilchrist has moved up into third now. Aisha Thornton in fourth place and Camilla Hattersley in fifth. But uh, you'll get used to seeing that pink cat. You'll get used to seeing Jazz Carlin. Perhaps now just a little bit from my vantage point, though Ross will no doubt correct me on the splits, just a little bit of time that's creeping into those arms, perhaps, but the, the time doesn't indicate that. 10.31.83 is a time at 1,000 metres. Tier 1, of course, is way clear of everybody else in second. And there's quite a big gap between uh, Megan Gilchrist in third and Aisha Thornton. There's second place, Jessica Thielman turning in 10.50.63, so we're looking at 19 seconds. Did she drop off a bit in the 100 or not? Probably about five one hundredths of a second, so not really. But this, Bob, you're trusting my mathematics down to the T, so this is very, very loosely. Um, but again, I think she went 63.6, so she's now got 500 meters, less than 500 meters to go. Um, she's looking on to have a great time here. Are you going to give me an estimate? Are you going to give me a little ballpark figure here, what she might do? If, if you give me a chance to work it out, yeah. <laughs> We are looking, I think, well, we, we're certainly looking at the moment, aren't we, a new Welsh record for her, because her Welsh record is 16, 18.80. She's getting better than that, surely. Yeah, surely she's going to be. It looks like if she carries on this speed, she's going to go under 16 minutes. Um, somewhere around about 15, 58, which would be the fastest time in the world this year, if she can keep this going. That will be a British record as well. Kerry Ann Payne, 16.06.67 is very much under threat. There's Jessica Tillman coming in for her turn. She's going back. Where's Jazz Carlin? Where are you, Jazz? There you are, at that far end of the pool. She won't be able to hear me from this distance because she's turning as far away from us as she possibly can be. And that lead is just enormous. She's starting to slow down now. She's 0.3, uh, 3 uh, 0 0.3 of a second slower on that 100 to the previous 100. This is the graveyard part of this race. You've gone past the 1,000 metre mark, into the 1100s, 1200s, and then as soon as you get past the 1300, you've only got 200 metres left. So this next 200 metres is critical if Jazz wants to lay down that world leading mark of uh, under 8, 16 minutes. It's kind of the equivalent of doing a night shift. You start strong, you have that dip at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, and then about 5, you get a second burst of energy. And she's 12.39, 29. She's not dropping off all that much, it must be said. At 1,200, 300 to go, uh, she's still on course for a remarkably quick time. Remember, best time in the world this year, Lotta Fries, 16.01.41. Now, she and Becky Adlington had some great battles over the years. Perhaps it'll now be Lotta Fries and uh, Jazz Carlin going head-to-head. -head. Yeah, it will be. You talk about uh, a late shift. I don't think I've ever done one. <laughs> you swimmers never do. You do an early shift quite often, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but this is the important bit now. Jazz really needs to dig deep. She's going to be hurting. She's at, the 800 her, is her main event, so she'll be training every day for that 800. So we're now out of her comfort zone, and we've only got leading, oh, just going into 200 and... 15 metres to go. This is where she really needs to go to her legs and pick it this up. She'll be looking forward to that bell. She's probably thinking, is it going to come this time? No, it's not going to come this time, but it will do the next time you come down the pool because there are 200 metres to go. 1342.69 after lap number 26, i.e. 1300 metres. Jessica Thielman is now, goodness gracious, she's... 40 metres behind Jazz Carlin now. There is uh, 
Tillman wearing the Gators cap. And she will now touch 13. Jazz at the other end is 13.50. Here she comes. That just shows you the gap between first and second. How is Jazz doing with 150 to go, Ross? She can now see some people that she's coming up to lap. She's only 10 meters behind lapping the first swimmer. She's got 150 meters to go. She's just gone 63.5, so she's picked it up a little bit. She's almost 